and welcome. Give me just a moment. And uh, popping out the chat. And boing. Hello everyone and welcome. For those of you watching after the fact, which would be everyone because no one's in the chat yet, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon and any cubic photon is amazing for miniatures and cats are amazing for being little snuggle sluts. You mind? I put you down now. Apparently not. Really? I'm going to be putting you down on the ground now, Fuzzbutt, so I can get to actually doing broadcast. No, 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 Fuzz. Down you go. Okay. Well, I'd like to say, now that I don't have a cat in my lap, um, it seems that one of the most common requests I get for the Patreon sculpts are dwarves of some kind. Uh, I've made multiple different dwarven heavy armor fighter type. Heavy armor fighter types. A dwarven monk? No! So, yeah. Carlton. <sighs> Without a doubt, Cam Dev Tube. Him. The her isn't on her bed yet. She's off eating. Well, hold on just a second. Chew, Fuzz. Anyway, so... Uh, the patron whose sculpt I'm going to be doing today could not make it into the chat uh, because of timing and all that, but I'm still going to go ahead and I've gotten as much detail from them as I can for the miniature. And it's a dwarven mage. So, here in just a couple minutes, oh, sinuses are killing me. I'm going to be popping open and getting ready to do this dwarven mage. Um... I'd like to say, don't forget the, the Green Tide. The Green Tide is funded. It got funded on the first day, but now it's about this close to the first stretch goal. Goblins. The goblins won't be quite as versatile as the orcs because they've only got, you know, first of all, over here, Shinji. Yes, you. Come on. I don't know if you heard that little plaintive little meow. But the cat's now currently inspecting the microphone. No. You can't inspect the microphone, baby girl. You bad. Yeah. No. 
No. No. Someone else wants it to be all about her. Anyway. So, what's going to happen is the goblins don't have as many pieces, for one. Head, torso with arms, legs. And number two, uh, there's not quite as many heads, for example, or as many legs. Um, where the orcs, among other things, you had tribal orc, regular orc, heavy armor orc. With the goblins, you've got robe or pants. Go figure. So, there are wolf riders. There will be wolf riders. In fact, one of my shows earlier this week was detailing the wolf, furrying up the wolf, so to speak. And yet another furball. This time, Ralph. Yes, I have two black cats. This one has the red collar. You mind, little crazy cat? I'm trying to broadcast, and you guys are just, like, monopolizing the time. Yeah. So that's three. That's all I got, three. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this buzz butt off the, cha off the chair. Hey, Ralph? What are you doing? No. Come on, I need to get you up off the chair. Furball? Yes, you. Notice, he doesn't want to let go of the chair. All right, come on. Get down. Good boy. Oh, anyway. So now it's time to open up and start working on the dwarf. Now I know what you're thinking, that doesn't look like a dwarf. Now it does. And before I do anything, I need to make his two props. So we're just going to export this. And we're going to put this under Free Sculpt Minis, Patreon Minis, New, New Folder, Warven. Mage CZ Raw. The CZ is to put it at the end alphabetically so I don't have to, so I can just know that's just not the one I'm working on. And then we switch over to 3D Studio Max. We're going to import. First, we're going to import, let's just say, a Spear. Now, the reason for this is we're going to use the spear. Well, let's change the color so we can see it better. Make it this color. The reason we're bringing in the spear is so that we can, we're going to be using this as the basis for his staff. And then we're going to File, Import. And then once again, we're going to go to Patreon Minis, New. Dwarven Mage ZZ Raw. Import. This is just to get our placing of it properly. Okay, first things first. I'm going to come down to fit into where his hand is as a dwarf, which is about here. Then, we're going to use this. Select it. Invert, and we're deleting the actual spearhead. And then kind of dragging this, we know that it's going to be, the hand is going to be a little bit below shoulder high. So that's one and about one and three quarters. So we need to have, whoop, one and three quarters or so. Okay. And now what we're going to do for the top of the, top of it is we're going to make a little anvil. 
Now, because this is going to be fused later on, we don't have to worry about making it too absolutely perfect. Okay, we can have overlapping geometry, which in fact we will. And what we're going to do is we're going to have from here, yeah, about here, down to about here. Bring it up. Bring it up to about there. And now we're going to enlarge it just a bit. Well, first we need to make sure it's in the right same same x y z same x and z actually. Eleven point four oh three. This x is eleven point four oh three. This z is twelve point two oh one. This needs to be twelve point two oh one. And then we're going to go ahead and make it just a little bit bigger. So it's not quite poking out. And we're going to make sure the height has two segments. Double poly. Zoom out. We're going to. Okay, we can actually make it a little bit. No, or we're actually, yeah, let's go ahead and bring it out slightly. Because we're going to connect it another way. And now. We're going to remove the selection of this. And we're going to extrude this out, not that far, but to about here. Then we're going to grab here and drag it down. This is going to be more of a an abstract uh, anvil. It's the basic shape of one. A little bit more out, and we're going to narrow it this way. We might end up making the anvil bigger. Next step is make another box. This will end up being the point on the front of the anvil. Once again, it's not something that it, it's not actually what it's called, but I mean, we're going to pull it out about to there. Drag it over to there. Now, we're going to play. And what we're going to do first is we're going to grab here. We're going to bring it in about three quarters of the way. And then here, and we're going to bring it all the way, which in this case means 20, negative 22.021. So that's negative 21. All right, negative 22.021. And we're going to weld them. So those four vertices become two. Then we're going to select here. We're going to shrink it down a little bit there. And then from here, we're going to shrink it down to, oh, let's give it a Y of one. All right, now. We're going to select the top part of it. We're going to make it a little bit wider at the top, a little bit narrower on the bottom. And then we're going to select here, and we're going to connect the two all the way as close to the top as we can. We're going to do the same thing here. Okay, now if we smooth this with a, um, subdivide it, one, two, we get the look of that little point on the front of an anvil, but it's too small. So we're going to make it bigger.
and bring it down. And actually, let's go, let's go ahead and pull it back in a little bit because that's, yeah, there we go. That's all. And what we have so far is this. Now we need to detail this part of the anvil by selecting some of our corners and edges, but not all of them. And we're going to chamfer it at 0 0.01. Then we're going to move it. Oh wait, no, I know what we need to do. We forgot to do something over here. Yeah, we need to select these and weld. There we go. Now we're going to smooth. Oh. Okay, good. Now, mesh smooth. One, two. And this is our basic anvil shape. And I'm pretty sure we can go ahead and make that a bit bigger. So let's go ahead, well first let's bring this up a little bit. Alright, so. Now we, cra we collapse the stack, attach that, and now we're going to make it bigger. that it's actually in contact, infinitesimal overlap, hit control Z, and that's his staff. We're going to detail it when we get to actually sculpting. So, let's go ahead and select that, and attach this, and then we're going to rotate it 45 degrees. Actually, it might end up being less than 45 degrees. Well, there, angle snap. 45 is perfect. Okay. Now we're going to export this. Export selected out. Meshes, Free Sculpt Minis, Patreon Minis, New, Dwarven Mage, OBJ Format, CZ Staff. What was described to me is that this dwarf with a nice beard, wizard hat, robes, is going to be holding his staff and casting a spell while reading from his book. So, Helio Mark. That's the staff. Go ahead and back in here. We're going to file import. And nope. Patreon Minis, New Dwarven Mage, ZZ Staff, as opposed to ZZ Top. Now what we're going to do, under Content Library, we're going to go ahead and load in one of the existing staffs, Resident Slayer up right hand. We're then going to Back View, and select our little wizard staff, then we're going to select the staff we made. And it just needs to come over a little and down just a tad. Then we select the wizard staff right hand and delete it. We then take the staff here and parent it to the right hand. There we go. He's got his staff in place, or what will be his staff. Let's go ahead and while we're at it, let's give him the uh, robe skirt. Because he's going to be wearing robes. And do I have... yes, beard. We're going to end up making that beard a good bit longer, but yeah. We also need to make his hat and his book. So, come back in here, and we need to make a book. To be exact, one that's kind of large and fits in his left hand. So we want one that opens out to be from here, so that he can have his hand out like this. And the book's like... Boom, boom. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a box. We're going to start it it's out in the middle of nowhere. We're going to remove 
that height segment there. Okay. Then we're going to convert it edible poly. Select both of these. Extrude them out a lot less than that. About there. Oops. I forgot to hit the green there. Then we're going to grab this. Bring it up to there. And these over. And now we're going to extend it out just a little bit more yet again. Then we take this and we bring it in and down. And from here, get it close to where it looks like 45 degrees here. Okay, a little bit more. There we go. Actually, we want it slightly less, so it's a little bit more open. Oh, I know what, what the problem is. Yeah, we forgot to uh, make it thicker again, because we need to make it back as thick as the existing cover. And now we make the cover. That's about good. Now we got we you, you realize that we might end up having to make this a lot smaller than what it currently is. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna select here and here, and we're gonna connect them twice with a wide divisor divisor. And about there. Then we're gonna deselect here, Control Backspace to get rid of them. Now we're going to do the same thing here, but not quite as close. Okay, now select here, select here, loop, chamfer, 0 0.001. Okay, and then finally we're going to select here, connect, and there. This is uh, now mesh smooth one, two. That is the cover of our book before sculpting. See, it already looks kind of like a book cover. Now we're going to make the pages. And the way we're going to make these pages is we're going to make, very simply, yet another box. Now we need to move this up here. And we're going to give it two height segments. Or not height, but uh, width. Edible poly. Now we're going to divide it. Connect. Two. We're going to deselect the ones near the center and control backspace these. Now, these two we're going to pull up to about there. These two we're going to, or these we're going to pull up to about there.
Uh -huh. There we go. That's going to be the pages. Now all we do is, is bring these out just a little bit more. And a little bit closer. Then, we're going to select here. Here. And here. And we're going to chamfer it. 0 0.001. Next move one, two. Okay. We need to go ahead and pull these out a little bit more. No. And then the next thing we do is we're going to have to make one more slash in here. Connect one. And these, we're going to extend it out just a little bit and then down just a little bit. Because we want to give it kind of a, that look. So now, mesh smooth one, two. That looks, there we go, that's our pages. We're going to add more to it when we go to actually do the sculpting. Collapse all. Now we're going to take this, collapse all, and we're going to attach the pages. We can get away with them being not quite perfectly symmetrical because it's a book and they were hand bound back then. Let's go ahead and shrink it just a little. Okay, now. Okay, now we're going to move this to here. And we're going to move it back so it's kind of almost centered in the hand. And file, export selected, ZZ book, export, done. Now the last thing is going to be the, ha the uh, hair, but while we're waiting, File, import, ZZ book. Yep. And we're going to parent it to the left hand. Okay, now, it doesn't look like much right now. Because he's still in his A pose. He doesn't have any sculpting done. Yeah. And we still need to make that beard visible. That uh, hat. So we're going to export the beard. And then from here, we're going to import the beard. That's just so that we have you know, an idea on how to tweak this. Now, lizard, wizard hat. We're going to start with a cone with only three height segments. Two cap segments and only 12 sides. And about to there. Okay, now we increase. Let's make this blue just or purple, just so we can see it a bit easier. Okay, we're going to increase the radius until both sides are visible. Okay, now we're going to collapse it. Now, we're going to select both of these and kind of Make them a bit bigger just to give it more of a slopey curve to it. As you can see in the rendered video, uh, rendered window. Now, we're going to delete the cap. 
and make sure that we weld these vertexes. Weld vertexes should be one, and there we go. Now, we're going to rotate it. Bring it down a bit. <clears throat> we are going to then scale it down this way. Okay. And then X to zero. Yeah. The next step is I'm going to take this camper at whoop, at point zero zero one. I'm going to select it again, make it bigger and wider, and then we're going to kind of bring it down a bit. All right, now we're going to do what's called a shell. But instead of going outside the shell, we're going to go inside the shell so that it ends up basically fusing with the head, as you can see. Flaps all. We're then going to select the edges where the brim meets the hat on both the outside and the inside. We're at Edible Poly and Loop. And then we're going to chamfer them 0 0.001. Give it a mesh smooth or two. And it looks like we might have to thicken that up because that looks very, very thin. Let's see what happens if we... Whoa, no, no. Ring. Connect to, but overall, oh, okay, two, yeah, we need to push it a bit, so we got to push, which is right here on my layout, and we're just going to push it until it's very clearly going to print well. Okay, that's good. So now we're going to collapse it, and we're going to export it out to the ZZ hat. Actually, let's go ahead Let's make it soft selection, shrink that soft selection quite a lot. Lock soft selection, we're going to bend it here. There we go. We bent it. We're going to detail the bend and the fold in the sculpting point. Okay. So, file, export selected, ZZ hat. Yes. ZZ hat should not be mistaken for ZZ top. Let me come back in here. Let's make them all visible again. All the bits and pieces and bits and bobs and doobies and, and what you call it. Um, File, import, ZZ hat. Accept. And we're going to parent that to his head. Now, one thing we need to do, we go to a back view. And 
we are going to move our center point to the center of the spine. Okay. Now, the next step is we're going to hide all the props because we're going to cheat on, on dealing with them. And what we're going to do first, uh, excuse me, I'm going to rotate the, hop, the, the hips that way. That's a good bit. I'm going to bend back just a little bit. Now, the next thing is we're going to bring this leg down. Not very much. Front view. Select the foot. Okay. We're going to hit... We're going to rotate this a bit more. We're going to... Well, first, let's... Bend the foot. Click Control D to drop it to the ground, which okay, what's oh yeah. The robe. Alright, let's tuck those uh shin, foot, and toe on both sides. And we're gonna why scale them up a bit? Oh, all. Why scale them up a bit? And then grab him and hit Control D. Okay. We're going to hide the robe again. We're going to side to side this leg. Twist. And bend. Control D to drop it again. Now we're going to pin translation and pin rotation. Select the hip. We're going to side to side a good bit more. Then we're going to move it so that this foot is on the ground. Okay, now side to side that foot again. And bend it up a bit more. Okay. Now, perspective view. I already see how the torso is. Now, we're going to lean the abdomen forward a bit. Just a bit. We're going to twist it a little because we want this left arm to have plenty of room to have, be holding that book. And then we're going to twist the chest a bit I decided a bit more. Bend it back a little. Actually, that's what we need to do. We need to side to side the abdomen. So it's kind of almost leaning away with that staff. Make the staff visible so we can pose it properly. We're going to twist the upper arm. We're going to bend the forearm and twist it again then we're going to side to side it a little bit so that it's front and we're going to side to side the collar now go to the front view so we can make sure that we're not putting this any deeper into ground. Oh. Bend at the wrist. And from the front view, once again, move this down so it's touching the ground. A little bit into it. OK, 
Okay, now, perspective view. We're now going to bring this arm forward, just a bit, but we're going to drop this shoulder a little, because that's a heavy book. And we're going to bend the hand a little. And make the book visible so we can see where it's going. Okay, the book is a little large. One thing we can do, we're first going to go ahead and... Whoop! We're going to select the book. We're going to shrink it just a bit. Then, we're going to pin the chest. We're going to grab the hand, and we're going to pull it out. Whoop. Let's uh, make that collar forward. Unbend the forearm. And side to side the hand. Okay, now we're going to, let's use this tool, it'll be a little bit easier, pull it out like that, just a little bit, let's make that negative 17, and then we're going to start tweaking the, uh, There we go. And then we're going to bend the fingers. All right. Now we hit frame. Now we're going to go from top view. We're going to hide the staff for right now. We're going to select here. And we're going to move it out. Okay. There we go. No, the forearm, <clears throat> we need to make side to side to zero. But the hand, we can go side to side a bit. Front view. And we're going to just slide the staff a little bit more. And now we need to make that facial expression a bit more dynamic. So let's select the head and zoom in. Now, we are going to open that mouth quite a bit. Not that much. That's a bit too much. Now, one thing we got to do real quick since I'm looking at it. I really should have done this earlier. <clears throat> and then chest, neck, jaw, next rotation. And we're going to make this forty eighty. There we go. There we go. And here is our 
pre, well, let's add the rogue bottom. Our pre-sculpting Dwarven Mage casting a spell from his spell book. Yay! Now, what we do is we're going to export these bits individually. Turn off the hat, turn off the staff, turn off the book, turn off the robe, turn off the beard. <coughs> File, export, body. Hide the body, make the hat visible. File, export, hat. Accept. Hide the hat, make the staff visible. File, export, staff. Hide the staff, make the book visible. File, export, book. Accept. Hide the book, make the robe bottoms visible. File, export. Oh, actually, before we do that, what we really need to do, file, import, we're going to load in a base. Kind of need a base. Um, we're going to make it the uh, magic circle. Go to front view, select it, and maneuver it until it's right nice and proper, just barely below the feet. The feet are just kind of going into it. Right view, no, right view. Now, we're going to go to the robe. We're going to go back into that shin, foot, and toe that we used, to, that we altered in order to make, the, make it drop properly. And we're going to Y scale those again until they're flat. Effective view. Okay, now we're going to hide the base. Hide the robe. No, we need a robe visible. We're going to hide the, the staff and dwarf. File, export. Robe. Accept. Let me hide the robe, make the beard. File, export. Beard. Accept. Hide the beard. File, export, base. And then, ZBrush. Yay, ZBrush! And what we're going to do here is we're going to import. Let's get to that directory, Dwarven Mage. We're going to start with the body and draw it into place. Then, we're going to, in the sub-tools, append Polymesh 3D. This is going to be the robe. We're going to append Polymesh 3D. This is going to be the beard. Append Polymesh 3D. This is going to be the book. And Polymesh 3D. This is going to be the staff. Append. Polymesh 3D. Ah, append Polymesh 3D. This is going to be the hat. This is going to be the base. Frame. Once again, we have him here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to hide everything but him and the robe. And now it's time to start on our sculpting.
this is tablet. One of the first things we're going to do is we're going to smooth out this area right here. So that's an area of geometry that kind of misbehaved. I'm also going to be using move. Let's turn on that. It's going to kind of pull down this area and pull it out like that. We need inflate, no standard, which means we need to go over here and turn off, ahem, go over here and turn off lazy mouse. Decrease the density quite a bit, intensity, and pull it out down this way. Now, going down to here, we're going to smooth out these areas until we get down to, to skin. And then we're going to go back to move and make this bigger. We're going to grab the front here and move it up above the foot because the feet are poking through the robe. Oh, it's kind of tilted a little bit. Now, next thing is we're going to start, we're going to smooth them out. And then from the body, we're going to merge down. Always okay. And under geometry, we're going to Dynamesh 768. Dynamesh. And then subdivide it one. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to shrink the mouse a bit. And using the mouse instead of the the uh, stylus, we're gonna smooth over those, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Back, smooth over this area. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that didn't do a lot there. So let's smooth it out. And okay, and then here. Use this first. And provide delete lower, turn off dynamesh. Okay, so we have our thing here. Now, we need to make the limits of the robe besides above the feet. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark off section of the sleeve here, because it's going to be a full sleeve since it's, yeah, 
at a good spot and we're also going to do the same here the thing is we're going to have to de deselect some areas in here Zoom in, make this bigger. Frame out. All right, yeah, let's go ahead and deselect a little bit of that there because we don't want it to be sticking out the way it was going to be. This will be our sleeves. And from here we're going to extract at a point zero 0.02. Accept. Draw. Select him. Draw. The reason we're doing that draw is to turn off all of the uh, masking. Now we're going to dynam we're going to Z remesh this at about a 10 and 100% adaptive size so that we keep this nice sharp edges on the front. But at the same time, we need to make sure it's still a few hundred thousand polygons, which this will probably be closer to 80, my guess. Oh, only 30. Well, let's go ahead and subdivide it a couple times. 504,000, but now we dynamic it at 768, or 512. And then we divide it there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the Move tool. We're going to make this bigger. And we're going to grab and drag down our sleeve until we start to see the... Uh, And then we're going to smooth this out. We're going back here to Dynamesh. After we do this, because I realize I really should have done this with a smaller polygon count. Pull that up. So that yeah. We're also going to smooth out the ends here. And then we're going to smooth out these areas. We'll clear them out after we fuse it. Okay. Now we're going to make the mouse a little bit bigger. Looking at it, we need to make it one, two, there. We're going to grab this point right here and pull it down some more. We're going to grab here and pull it down. And then we're going to smooth it.
Okay. There we go. That's that sleeve. Well, we can grab it and pull it out a bit. That's that sleeve. Now we're going to do the same thing with this one. Only what we're going to do is we're going to make it bigger selection. So we've got to kind of pull it down like that. Then we're going to make it here. We're going to pull this in, grab here, pull down, and smooth. Now, we're going to smooth out the tops and the, the back ends of this. And we're going to smooth out this. There we go. That's our sleeves. And we're going to merge down. Dynamesh it. And we're going to zoom in and smooth off the edges where the sleeves meet the arm. On both sides. All right. And now, before we do anything else, we're going to make the beard visible. We're going to use the move tool to make it a bit larger and, and thicker and beardier. Pull it out there, put it out here. We're going to grab here and pull it down that way. Grab here, pull it down that way. Then we're going to inflate because we're going to inflate that beard. Shrink it down and then kind of inflate here. Make it thicker and beardier. that out some. Okay. Now we're going to use the move tool once again. Claim the bottom half of the hair, pull it down. We're going to do it in a couple layers so that it There we go. Now we're going to inflate on the sides. Just to make sure we haven't gone outside the hat. Okay, good. Now, we're going to take that beard, we're going to subdivide it a few times, and dynamite it 256. Good enough for now, we're going to hide the beard again and the hat. Because what we've got to do now is add in the next seam. So, switching back to the standard brush so we can shrink it down for this. 
We don't have to worry about the front of the collar or the back of the collar. What we have to worry about is here. So we're going to kind of draw on what would be pauldron areas. And then we're going to well, we're going to kind of erase part of it here because we want it to kind of be relatively sharp. All right, now we're going to extract this at point zero two. Accept, draw, draw there to get rid of the masking. I'm just going to directly. Dynamics this at 256. And then we're going to smooth over the edges. There are many, many ways to accomplish what I'm doing. The way we're creating this separation between the clothing and the skin. And then fusing it together with the other parts to make, to make it look you know, but I'm just doing one that I find the easiest and that gets the best results for me. Okay. And here we go. Now we're going to subdivide it a couple times. Merge down. We do this. And it's, sub and it's blended. So now we're going to go and make sure that it's blended up here. And now, one, two, three, four. Bring it over here, and we're going to come across this way. And one, two, three, four, five. When we turn on the beard, it covers up most of that area except for what we just placed. Frame out. Okay. So, the beard is actually going to end up being the last thing we do. The next thing that we're going to do is the book. And what we're going to do with this book is we're going to work on it by itself. Geometry 8. Frame in. We're going to subdivide it a few times until it's super high res. And then we're going to dynamix it at 512. Now, we're going to subdivide it a bit. And now we're going to draw on the cover. Now what we're going to do with this is we're actually going to kind of draw on a runic -y, dwarven -y face. And we're going to do it like this. Actually, let's... We're actually going to have to turn on Lazy Mouse for this. And then from here, up, uh, 
Oh, come on. Okay. We're going to do the same thing on the back. Actually, no, I know a better way to do this. Let's go ahead and first things first. I'm going to go to auto masking. Hold on, control, back face mask. Okay. Frame. Come on, get going. Stop it. And there we go. All right. Now we've got the entire back co cover selected. And what we're going to do, we're just going to very, very carefully deselect the absolute top, the absolute bottom, the edge there, the edge there. Uh, let's bring a little bit more edge in. Then, deselect there. And deselect there. Okay. Now we're going to extract this. There it is, subtool extract 0 0.01. Extract. Accept. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to deselect even more. Come on. Okay, now we're going to deselect a large chunk here and here. Not quite as wide here. Here and here. Then we go to mask. Well, first, just in case, let's go to display properties and click double faced. And we're going to masking and inverse deformation. Zoom in, and we're actually going to deflate in. Okay. We hit draw. And then we're going to dynamesh this at 512. And subdivide twice, blue lower. And here we have the ridges of the co of the cover. And now we're going to use layer to draw, or not layer, but we're going to use uh, the masking to draw on our cover decoration. And so we're going to shrink this even more. And then. 
Oh, we gotta turn off the uh, lazy mouse. And. All right, now. All right, let's make an anvil or a pseudo anvil. Okay, and then we're going to just kind of draw on just some random runes. And cut the edges kind of flat just to make it less. And then Odal here. And then we're going to extract it at point zero one. Draw. Go back to the book. Draw. Now on the back, we're going to put on a rather crude circle. with another circle. And then just to push things a bit, we're gonna And then draw. And then we're going to merge down. Frame. And so here's our book. Let's check to see how it looks in his hand. Okay. That's good. Next is the staff. Frame. Geometry. Subdivide a couple. No, wait. No, no. I've got the wrong subtool. I meant to select the staff, not. Now, I'm going to go ahead and. No. Tool. Let's go to masking and sharpen this a little bit. And then we're going to extract except draw. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a gemstone on each side of this. Depth. Okay, we're going to put a gemstone on both sides. A large one. No, that one's too close to the top. There we go. And then split unmasked. And 
them out. Yeah, as you can see, sometimes you need to redo it. All right, split unmasked. We're going to merge the two gems together. We're then going to take move topological. Much larger. I'm going to grab him and pull it out a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to grab this and pull it out a little bit. Just to make sure that we've got this nice, clearly defined trim. And let's subdivide it. Now, back to the staff. We're going to put something, we're going to engrave something on top of the staff. And what we're going to do is we're going to do that with Orb Cracks 2. And off Lazy Mouse, we're going to go pretty deep. And what we're going to engrave That says magic in the Futhark runes. One other thing we're going to do, we're, let's go to layer. We're going to change to drag dot. We're going to bring this up to 100. We're going to turn off lazy mouse. And then we're going to load in. Where is that one alpha? Alpha 48. Yeah, that's the one we want. What we're going to do is we're going to put some rivets around the base. This is a dwarven staff, so it's, you know, got rivets and stuff. There we go. Frame out. Okay, pretty much for all intents and purposes, what we have left to do is the wrinkles on the robe and possibly a belt. Yeah, we need to do a belt. And we need to do the the bearding and the uh, wrinkles and beard and then cleaning up the mouth area. So what we're going to do now, we're going to zoom in and with a shrunken mouse, we're going to hardcore smooth out this area in here. It's going to bring it forward. And up here. Now we're going to shrink this down, and what we're going to do is we're going to All right, now we're going to extract these.
0 0.015 extract. Yeah. Geometry dynamic one. No. 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 Now let's zoom back in here since it's not it's it's too close to really and smoothing that down. There we go. Now we're smoothing that out. We're getting some teeth visible. Hopefully these will work, these will print out well when it comes time to print. I can't guarantee they will. And then move topological. Shrink this down a good bit. And then Okay, now we're going to subdivide it a couple times, delete lower. And then on him, we're also going to take inflate. We're going to shrink this down, and we're going to basically inflate the lower lip a bit with the beard visible so we can see how large we can get. We want that lower lip clearly visibly a lower lip. Okay, now, I'm going to merge down, subdivide, And I'll dynamesh it. So now it's belt time. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of angle it to where the belt's going to be. Be kind of a bit of a broad belt. And then deselect the uh, polygons and the sleeves that accidentally got marked. Okay, now, one, two, three, we're going to mark up, well, I better do this with stylus, we're going to mark up there, and there, then we're going to turn on the beard just so we can see it as we do this, we're going to extract this at 0 0.02 extract. Draw. Oh. Extract. Accept. Draw. Draw. Okay. Now. We've gone on to geometry. We're going to dynamesh this at 256. And and make the mouse bigger and smooth out this because we 
we want it to kind of be a bit flatter than this. Now let's hide the body. Something that I say far too disturbingly often. Fortunately, only in this context. By the way, for those of you who are preparing for your spring lawn care program, um, Costco has decided to stop carrying Roundup after some of the more recent uh, cancer scare accusations. My only thought is, gee, who would have expected something designed to kill living things might be dangerous. Okay, divide, 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 delete lower. Okay, now from here we can start working on the wrinkles. I got three people watching. Okay, so we're going to start off with the clay buildup and the brush being, the alpha being, yeah, that one. Uh, increase the intensity a little bit and turn off lazy mouse and we're gonna make it a bit bigger because this is kind of heavy robes so I'm gonna start off no too strong And mom was watching that stupid bar rescue show. All right, that's the basic shaping. We're going to smooth this out. One, two. We're now going to come back around and smooth this out. And then one, two. Now we're going to start working, giving the basic forms and shapes for the wrinkles under here. It's going to come up from under the underarm, across under the underarm and across. Okay.
frame. Alright, now it's time to go for the slash tool. Turn off lazy mouse, bring that down to 14. And shrink that mouse down a little bit. We're going to kind of come under and draw in our Oh, wrinkle. Let's add in the lazy mouse, make it a little bit long. Yeah. And we're going to kind of bring in under. Okay, that's not strong enough. Let's increase the strength. Okay, and then we're gonna and then bring it over around here. And this is already looking a lot better, even than, you know, just a little bit of strokes here and there. And we're getting some good wrinkling. And let's see if we get this done. Okay, now we go up here, and we're going to kind of add in the wrinkly bits here. Okay. And let's bring this down here. Sorry if we get quiet. You know, I'm just kind of to get these wrinkles done. And I'll probably have it done in my usual two hours, thankfully. Okay. Now, let's zoom out. And we're going to switch this to add, drop the intensity to 12. And then we're going to draw in... Actually... Let's increase that intensity to 17. Now, let's increase that intensity there. And... No, not sharp enough. There we go. We draw down near the bottom of the wrinkle so that the end result will be it, a wrinkle following gravity. Okay, and then coming down here. Down. Bring this around the foot. Okay. Excellent. Now we're coming around on the back wrinkles. Bring this down and around. down. Now this one coming around like that and coming down and around and down. 
now the chest. Let's bring this down. Once again, we're going kind of near the bottom of the wrinkles. You'll notice that the technique I use for wrinkles is pretty much very close to what I do for hair, except hair has a tendency to be a bit sharper and it doesn't follow gravity as much because it's more of an even spread. I need to smooth that just a little. There we go. Okay, so now when we make that beard visible, yeah, okay, that's good. Take a brief pause while I poke my head in and hello, Largash. Get some soda done. Now what we're going to do next is this beard. We select the beard. And we're going to geometry, dynamize it, or subdivide it to about there. It may seem excessive for the beard and hair, but that's because we're going to be doing some stuff on the beard and hair a bit more decorative than what you would expect for a human wizard. All right, first things first, let's get this inflate, and let's go ahead and just give it a little bit of inflation on the mustache area. Oh, yeah. A little bit of inflation on the mustache area. Simply because, again, it's not a human. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use clay buildup. We're going to make it smaller. We're going to make it a lot more intense, and we're going to draw on a braid coming down from the side on each side. Like this. Just drawing by alternating the strokes. And then we're going to just kind of add that in. We're going to end up inflating that in just a minute. But for right now, that's the initial status of that braid. And we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to come down here, around. Right now, we're going to smooth that out and that out, and we're going to drag it down. Make sure that it's bl almost blending with the belt. Because we want it pretty close. Okay. Now. We're going to go back to slash V sub. We're going to turn off lazy mouse and okay. Now we're going to draw around our
come around. And then we're going to kind of draw on this way to make it look like there is a. Yeah. And then inflate. I'm going to kind of inflate down the center just to make it stand out a bit more. Okay. Now we're going back to our slash tool and we're going to do this side. And there. And then bring this around like that. And once again, we're going back to inflate. We're going to run it down the center of our braid. Frame out. You can see how those braids are sticking out. They're very clearly braids. Now, it's time for the remainder of the beard. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of bring it back. We're going to make it a little bit wavy. Not a lot, just a little bit. And now we're going to kind of start here. Okay, now we go back to slash, and we're going to kind of dig in between these locks, just to kind of really emphasize All right, and then we're going to kind of come in from here and here. Most of the top isn't going to be seen to begin with because of the hat. We just want to make sure it's there because we're, you know, we want to make sure all of it is coming through and it's got a continuation of motion. And then we're going to go to the Z add and drop this down to 10, or 10, not 9. And we're going to just, we're only going to do it on the beard and on the lower part of the hair. Just enough to make it nice and sharply defined hair.
Okay, now, next thing we're going to do, we're going to try a little experiment on this guy. So before we do anything else, we're going to dynamesh it at 768. Then we're going to sub... Well, while I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and take care of the rest of the beard. Okay. Now, we're going to subdivide it until it's back to that really high value. Delete lower, we're going to pull out the rake tool. We're going to turn on lazy mouse just so we can lower the lazy step to 0 0.05. Then turn off lazy mouse. I'm going to very lightly Bring it down like this, just enough. Whoop. No. Let's add in the lazy mouse. Let's just see how well it works with finer hair. And down the center, but not down the braid. Okay, frame out. Alright, now, I believe the last thing that we have to really work on now is the hat. And it is now 2.49, which means it's just in time to work on the hat. Geometry, divide a couple times until we got about there. And then we're going to dynamesh it at 2.56. Subdivide it a couple times again. Now all we're going to do with this is we're going to add wrinkles to the back of the hat. We're going to do that with the slash tool entirely. All right, so we're going to reduce that intensity to, to 12. Okay, and then... And I'm basically getting here and... kind of come out like that. Frame out. Let's smooth that just a bit because that's a bit too much. All right, now, we have our wizard casting a spell from his spell book with a nice detailed beard. About the only thing left to do is put a buckle on his back, now that I think about it, because really and truly that belt needs a buckle. So we're going to start off by first go back to insert gemstone, go to buckle, put it in the center. And make it oh, 
and then we're going to move just to make this a bit easier. Move out. Zoom out. And we're going to scale it. there and then that is going to be split unmasked parts select it geometry subdivided a couple times delete lower okay now look to start with the selection of the main body frame and then we're going to start merging down yes Carlton it's not it, do you mind little buddy I'm almost done almost time for kitty play go Okay, now what we're going to do, this is currently 10 million polygons. There! That's a lot. What do you think? 10 million polygons for this dwarven wizard with a really long beard and, and, and mustache, and hair. And a hammer staff. So we're going to dynamesh it 768. better but it's still 5.595 million polygons so we go to Z plugin and under decimation master we're gonna make this 100,000 polygons And reordering, writing file to disk, and there we go. Here is our Dwarven Mage. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to export this as Dwarven Mage figure. And then just to... kind of really show it off we're going to go to movie and let's make sure we got this document large remember these next steps when doing your movie it's document over here and large under title image turn fade in time to zero and fade out time to zero Overlay image opacity is zero. And modifiers, recording and playback FPS is 24. Okay? Always use those settings. It makes the best movies. Then we just click turntable. And here we have him turning. And then we're going to export. as dwarf mage turn and then it actually renders okay now 
Let me go ahead and pop back in to here. And here we go. So I see people weren't that talkative while I was sculpting. Yeah. Is it the 1 o'clock in the afternoon curse? Or now uh, 2.57? Oh. Salty. Hmm. I see what you're doing there, TJ. But the big question then becomes, do I bore you so much that you would rather do homework than listen to me? A anyway... But yeah, so, any questions for this afternoon's sculpt? This is a Patreon sculpt, which means in one week it will be in the Patreon file vault. The white filler for gaps. Cat hair on it. To me a putty. Now one thing to remember is the the reason why there's a, a well, it's kind of hard to see because it's all yeah, there you can kind of see it's got a pointy bit inside the cap because the tube comes as a sealed piece of aluminum. You gotta turn it around and puncture the cap. Uh, puncture up the cap. But this is what I use. You gotta be careful with it. You know, use, use a toothpick to kind of smooth it around the gaps. And then once you're done, you can just, you know, kind of scrape at it until it's filling in the seam properly. It was, it's pretty much originally formulated for your typical um, plastic model kit. Uh, that's found in some hobby shops. I can't guarantee that it's found in all. But there's another one. Write it down. That's just as good. It's called Squadron Green Putty. Squadron like a squadron of airplanes. Mm-hmm. One or the other should be found in most hobby shops. So, you can't quite see it, but Carlton's pouting in the window. Mm-hmm. 4650. 4656 as of this moment. Do you mind? What are you doing? Yes. Ralph felt left out. Yes. What Ralph wants... Ralph wants me to go take a nap so he can curl up next to me as I nap. Uh, this isn't Carlton. This is Ralph. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. Two black kitties. Carlton is over there. There, you see, it's not just that Carlton is unusually affectionate. All three of them are little cuddle sluts. Do you mind? Where are you going? No, not really. If they both end up in the lap at the same time, they just kind of curl up on top of each other. Meanwhile, come on, little buddy. Come on. No, no. Good night, little. Get down. Ah, that was a good one. Now, what I was going to say before I, before anything else, um, let me pull up a couple piece, a couple things that I've got here. Um, as many of you know, this is my personal preferred base shade for goblins and orcs. It's goblin green. It's very similar in tone to the original 1980s Games Workshop goblin green. Well, I found two new paints for highlighting it. A mid-tone highlight, let me go ahead and hold it up. A mid-tone highlight, that's called uh, Golden Olive, and then a really, really high-end highlight called Highlight for Italian Tank Crew from the Panzer Aces paint series. By, oh, both of them by Vallejo. So that the end result would be, is it in here? What's this? That's army green, no. End result is something like that. No, this is too. This is not the green I'm looking for. Not the greens you're looking for. I will be just a moment as I find the green on my painting table. Almost certain. Not 100% certain, but almost. Aha, here we go. This is angel green. This is actually a bit more... It's not as green green. Uh, not as blue green as this looks. It's actually more of a really, really dark green. But there you go. A nice... The, the, the path from shade to highlight for... Goblin and orc skin. Oh. Anyway, it is now 3.05. I'm going to be doing the whole hold up my hand and count from 5 to 1 thing that I usually do. And when I get to 1, say something goofy, go ee 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 ee, and then that'll be it. Okay, so it's going to be 5, 4, Three, two, one. Of course, Mark Hamill does a wonderful Joker. Why wouldn't he? He's got Arkham in his name. 